doing perhaps the second to last spoiler for Strixhaven, which congrats, we got through it. And there's some pretty neat stuff as per usual. We've got the, what is it? Silver Quill Guild College today. So we're going to be going through those spoilers. Honestly, though, not too impressed with it. Not too impressed. Maybe it's just because it seems too close to what we expect from Orzov, but hey, maybe maybe that's fine. Maybe that's okay. So first up, let's go as per usual, the interesting ones, and perhaps we will talk about some of the also interesting but yet common ones as well. So first up we have is this one that looks relatively similar to Meddling Mage, which is Silver Pulse Silencer. It's a white black creature human cleric. As Silver Pulse Silencer enters the battlefield, choose a non-land card name. Whenever an opponent casts a spell with a chosen name, that opponent loses three life and you draw a card. So I'm immediately getting the vibe from the meddling mage, except because blue can counter stuff, you're not allowed to play that card. Since it's black, essentially you net a card from some playing that, and you also do a little burn damage if you want to call it that, which by all means is pretty good. Like this is, pre we have meddling mage in arena already and having a, it's kind of equivalent to that in a black, it, it makes like Orzov feel like a pretty strong contender for like be the next like pretty decent mid-rangey maybe aggro based aggro deck in historic we got like kite cell freebooter inquisition of kozilek i believe is coming out i think we have of course we also have thought seas already so there's a lot of decent black removal spells that are like low cmc as well as just having like good creatures in black with like good toughness and power as well like this right here for two mana for three two that's already above rate but also if they're playing like three to six life in a game also drawing like maybe not three life but like six to nine life in a game and you drawing a two cards off of that, this is card advantage as well as like game ending like things happening in this card, which is all great. Like this is a great card. I think this card will definitely play. I'm definitely interested in seeing what you guys have to say about this card, but I was at first kind of iffy about this because you have to choose an online card and you have to play it, but you can always play around like adventure cards. I think if this is out during the the rotation of like stomp and stuff like that, you should name that because they know they're immediately going to play this. And it's not an ETB, it's just a replacement effect. So you're immediately getting value out of this if they do play those cards, if, the, if they play the foretellable cards. Um, and also, because they're foretell cards, this means if they do play those cards that you think they have and they foretell it and they cast it, that's just value right there. That's just straight value. So I'm going to give that card a good rating for standard. EDH, probably not too good play. Maybe you want to play like a humans deck. Maybe you add it in there because it can draw a card. But other than that, probably not where you want to go with this, but that's fine. That is A-OK. -okay. Um, of course, I'm talking more about standard now because I'm playing a little historic and a, uh, here and there, right? So we're going to talk about a few of these cards in that sort of con context. We have, let's see, next up, another pretty interesting card which might have some ramifications in more eternal formats, which is Talent Exam. One in a blue instant with counter target instant or sorcery spell. Search that player's graveyard hand or library for any cards with the same name as the counter card and exile them. That player draws a card for each card removed from their hand. From their hand. Gosh, I cannot talk today. All the beans I've been eating. <laughs> so this card is juicy. I think this is pretty good against combo decks, storm decks, perhaps maybe even control decks. Although control decks do tend to play some permanence, permanent based removals so like that in historic, anyways, and even in standard. I'm definitely seeing the the act the the reasons to play this in like modern though if you're playing against like any of those those decks that are really heavy on like the i guess not even modern i guess historic is probably going to play this the decks really heavy on the four copies of like the ultimatum decks in historic or is it no it's probably just standard i haven't played standard in a while yeah this card's gonna be good i think this card's gonna play a key role or maybe you know knock those cards their decks down a peg which is definitely needed because Sometimes those decks can get really stale. It's like, oh, if you don't kill them past like the third turn, it's like your deck, your deck is just over because you cannot survive that late game from the ultimatum. Yeah, it's a good card. Um, unfortunately, I don't think this card is too good, but maybe it is good. Let's check it out. Dream Strix. Two in a blue for a creature, bird, illusion, of flying. When Dream Strix becomes a target of a spell, sacrifice it. When Dream Strix dies, learn. 3-2. So this is an aggressively statted creature with flying. If it dies, you're probably still... You're going to be fine because you probably net a card with, with the whole lesson effects. So you're drawing a card essentially. This is three mana for a 3-2 that draws a card. Are you fine with that? Probably. 
the fact that it sacrifices itself when it's, it's targeted means it kind of sucks in most cases, but you're probably playing an aggro deck in this case. And so if they're targeting yourself, they're probably going to try to kill it anyways. This card's probably pretty fine. If Blessed Entity becomes a really good, strong mechanic, this will probably see a lot of play. This is a decent card. And like a blue based aggro deck. Or even, would you even play it in mid range? I doubt you played it in mid range, but in blue based aggro decks, this is probably decent if you have enough lessons. And then, let's see, we have Dramatic Finale. Orzov, 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 Orzov. Creature tokens you control get plus one, plus one. Whenever one or more non token creatures you control die, create a 2 1 and black black and white flying inkling. This ability charge only once each turn. So when a creature dies, you get a 2 1. Well, 3 2 in this case because creature tokens get plus one, plus one. It's probably fine. A 3 2. Based on the Inkly summoning, a three, uh, a two one is three mana. But I think the lesson effect does cost one mana, so this is like a two mana effect to get a two one. And so if you can get, you're getting a three two most of the time, right? If you have this out, and they and they they dare destroy your stuff, you're probably gonna get your value out of this. It triggers once per turn, so this needs to trigger twice to absolutely get like your value out of it. As flying too, it's so super evasive and aggro deck. This is probably decent in the top end right because even if they wipe the board they have to wipe it twice it's like pretty good board protection card here i think this card is fine probably see a lot of play and maybe aggro decks in edh but i think it'll see some play definitely in no not definitely but i think it'll see perhaps play in like orzov based aggro decks too this is like a pretty decent effect although i don't know if there's too many tokens like i feel like there are cases where this could give you just like a nothing do nothing card because you don't have enough tokens so who knows i don't know i do like the death effect though protecting your board like that is super helpful next up we have is basic conjuration one and a green green it's weird for conjuration i guess i would expect like blue or something a sorcery lesson or even red for like it's uh ways to bring out elementals look at the top six cards of your library maybe look at your card from among them put it into your hand put the rest of the card on the bottom of your library in random order you gain three life Three mana for a draw card effect in green. Probably not too crazy unless lesson is really good. If lesson's really good, this helps against aggro. It also draws you a card. It's kind of like a scry six or scry five, more or less, with gain three life. Would you do that for two mana? That's basically anticipate, right? But this is better because it has a lesson and it has the six card. This is probably fine for its cost. Yeah, I think that'll if Lesson is good, this might be able to see play in like green based aggro decks in the sideboard against aggro. Recent card. We have Fracture, Instant Target Artifact or Enchantment. Destroy Target Artifact cre Artifact Enchantment or Planeswalker. No creature. Just destroy Target Artifact Enchantment or Planeswalker. That's fine. It's pretty narrow. I think it's a sideboard card. And EDH is probably a. And EDH, you probably just put this in your main board, right? A braid takes care of artifacts. People play that, and it's still like a kill spell in some cases. Enchantments and planeswalkers are not too prominent, so maybe this doesn't seem that much play. But I can definitely see this in the like sideboard of standard, maybe historic decks. This is decent, I think. It's kind of weird though. It doesn't say creature on it, which I would assume like a white and black spell would be able to do, like handle a creature, destroy target artifact creature, enchantment, or planeswalker. But this doesn't do that. But that's fine. The red one does. That's red and white. It doesn't take care of... No, that one takes care of artifacts and enchantments, creatures and planeswalkers. It deals three damage to planeswalkers, right? This just straight up kills it. Dang, these are close. That one's also sorcery, isn't it? This is an instant. Maybe that's the difference. I don't know. I think this card is decent, though. This card is probably fine. I forgot the name of that card, though. But we'll, we can find it. Actually, we can, we can check it out over here. Let's see if we can find it. I know it's a white red card at least when I remember seeing. It was definitely like one of the first cards. So perhaps I don't know how it's how it's ordered. It's an instant? No, no, it's a sorcery. Right? Sorcery. So let's check out on the sorceries. I'm super curious because they seem pretty similar in strength, but why would red give more options to this this effect? Who knows? Uh, if we don't see it, then we don't see it. I'm pretty sure it's in here. Okay, so maybe maybe we can't... Oh, no, there it is. Rip apart. 
sorcery tr deal three damage to target artifact or planeswalker or deal three damage to target creature or planeswalker destroy target artifact or enchantments at sorcery speed okay interesting torn from history torn from memory torn from reality interesting hey i'm fine with that boros getting something interesting over like white and black maybe i'm totally fine with that I think generally the river part is better because hitting creatures being the most common thing is super important. And because that doesn't, I think that card's just slightly worse than rip apart. Fractures slightly worse than rip apart, but I think it's fine. Good sideboard card where I think rip apart would be a main board card. Main boardable. Double major. Green and a blue copy target creature spell you control except isn't legendary if it's legendary. Is that good? That's some spicy combos with that, like with Riku or something. Ooh, it doesn't even like disappear. It's you keep it forever. Ooh, just copy your commander. That would be spicy. You know those kids are always like aim your commanders once that thing is out. Play their commander. Wait a little bit. Wait a little bit. Play your commander. You copy your commander on the stack. Oh, if they just if they just counter your commander, you can just double major and copy your commander. And it's like you've you, like it's a counter spell basically. This is sweet. Yeah, this is sweet. Probably see play in EDH decks, but I don't see a reason why you'd play it in standard if that's there's, unless there's like a crazy standard combo that come come off of this. Maybe there's an historic with like I don't know. Maybe in historic I can see it. Show of confidence. This was an interesting card because it reminds me essentially of like a white grape shot. It has storm essentially when you cast a spell, copy it for each other instant notes you've cast this turn. You may choose new targets for the copies and it gives it plus one plus one and vigilance. So you can do the whole overrun thing, but also you can storm it. It doesn't give trample, so it's kind of worse. It's a lot worse because of course the grape shot can target anything. This targets all the creature only and it gives it it gives it a counter, so like there it does persist the strength. I don't think it's better by any means over grape shot. I think grape shot is just strictly better. But it's neat to have this in standard. Like, you know, they're giving us more more options for storm storm players. All right, let's see. Here's one I was excited for because it definitely shows that they're trying to branch out for more like white-based um, land fetches. And this Pilgrim of the Ages, two no white, one Pilgrim of the Ages enters the battlefield. You may search your library for a basic planes card, reveal it, and put it in your hand for six mana. I know it's steep, but hear me out. Return Pilgrim of the Ages from your graveyard to your hand. It is card advantage at common, but it it is costly. I understand. It's a sweet card. Sweet card. I don't think you play anywhere above mid power because it's six mana. But imagine you have nothing to do and you just. Oh, I think I'm just gonna search for a plane. It's like <laughs> maybe I'm maybe I'm over pushing it too much, right? I like I like it how we're going here though. Like maybe if this was like three mana or something. If this was three mana, I can see it's being played in like I don't know mana way at least. Being able to tutor like every. I don't know. Gosh, I want this to be good too. <laughs> I'm just making up stuff to try and get it to be good. Yeah, sweet card. I don't think this will be played anywhere besides maybe mid power and lower in EDH, but that's fine. Not all kinds of be that crazy. Next up, we have Detention Vortex, a white enchantment aura, enchant non land permit. Enchant non land permit can't attack, block, or activate its abilities, can't be activated. Three mana, destroy it, Detention Vortex. Only your permits, your permits can activate this, and only has a sorcery. Yo, imagine if you Detention Vortex your own crap. <laughs> you just you can never do it again unless someone's like really willing to help you out but like what if they deflecting swat it and then you attach it to like your own stuff that'd be funny you have to like plead with an opponent listen i think this card is fine in aggro decks where like one mana just to stop a blocker like stop their elder gagger off for one mana one white i'll take that I think this like takes a so like I can only think of this in context of my like dead guy ale deck. I think you would put this in like the one mana spot over like maybe a thought seize. Is that better than a thought seize? I think so. No 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 it's not because you really care about those board wipes. You want to get those board wipes other hand. This does not stop board wipes, so that does not matter. Um or thought seize hits a lot more than just in not land non land permanents right and most of the time thoughts can enable the 
Eben, Eben, Eben Legion Knight. Legion Eben Knight. I forgot the card's name. The black one that gets counters. Like that with a Shockland with Thoughtseize on turn one, on turn two, that, that's like extra counter. So it's it's not only like board progression, it's all, you're actually pumping your board and you don't care about your health. I don't know what deck you'd put this in, but I think like a maybe a Boros deck would want this. But you have Shock. I don't know. Past like the turn three or four, if they're doing this on like their two mana permanent, they're probably losing, right? It's probably fine in a Boros deck. Or maybe even a aggro Selesnya deck. I think. I think. I don't know. Tell me guys think about this comments from below. Is this where you're where you're looking at in Boros maybe? Or or non kill based colors? I mean red can kill things to an extent, but this just stops blockers. That's all you really care about. It can't go face, unlike Shock, but Shock also can't handle too many blockers. I don't know. This is debatable. I think this one's debatable. Mascot exhibition. This is interesting. I don't think this is good, but maybe it passes the value test. So a 2-1 we established is about 2 mana. A 3-2, about 2 mana, 2.5. Two so that's 4 mana there. A 4-4 four, four is about 3 mana. So I think this is you're getting more than your value is worth here. It's also mythic. I don't know why it's mythic. Maybe it's because it creates a bunch of colors. Colored things. White, black, red, white, blue, red. Okay, so it just hits every color. Besides green, there's no green here. Interesting. I wonder what green's getting. We haven't seen Wither, Wither Blossom yet. Interesting. I wonder what they're going to be doing. Yeah, I don't think this card is too good. Unless you're playing some weird, funky Changeling Tribal deck. But that's cool. Exponential Growth. XX and a green. So if X is 1, you're getting double. X is 2, you're getting... Wait, wait. X is 1, you're doubling. Yeah, you're doubling once. X is 2, you're quadruple. X is four, sex toppling. This is neat. There was this one card. Oh, it was electrostatic pummeler. It did the same thing. This kind of reminds me of that. Except you can just put it on any creature. It's sorcery, but hey, go big or home, right? <laughs> this could be fun if you have like um. Oh, I don't know what you play this in. Like a myriad card. Does myriad create a copy? If it does, and you have like trample on something. Or if they have no blockers, it's just a win. That's a dub. That's a fine card. We also have Vanishing Verse, white and a black instant with Exile Target mono colored permanent. I think this card is a all star personally. Most cards that you're playing against are going to be mono colored, and hitting most mono colored permanents is probably fine. Like this is maybe like a three three of main board, I think potentially. You're in white and black, not in like blue, black, something like that, obviously. So there's some downside in having to play like too many colors, or at least being an ores off, if that's a downside for you. But that's probably fine for this effect. I will target monocolored permanent. Probably play this in EDH all. <laughs> I don't know why it sounded loud there, but like all. I think all. <laughs> I swear I'll finish the sentence. I think all formats want this and EDH, all tiers. It's just like a assassin's trophy most of the time. Right? I mean you're not hitting the commanders, but other spells, because CMC is so low usually, like they end up being monocolored. Permanence wise, anyways. So it becomes like an assassin's trophy that you don't lose parity on. So I think this card is fine. Yeah, this card I think is will be play in EDH a lot. Also standard, historic, and I don't know other formats, but I think this card is pretty good. I think this card is like an all-star. Also, it's kind of funny that it's killing an Inkling, yet it can't actually target an Inkling functionally because Inklings are white and black. <laughs> I've seen that a few times before. Um, we have a few other cards here that aren't too particularly interesting. I don't think Deadly Vanity. It's an 8-mana board wipe. Choose a creature or a planeswalker, then destroy all their creatures and planeswalkers. Yeah, I guess it's one sided in some cases. Maybe choose your commander and destroy the rest, but for eight mana, you're only playing this in like low power, right? Then we have selfless, selfless Glyph Weaver. 
which I think is the more interesting part, which is Exile Selfless Glyph, Glyph Weaver, creature control gain indestructible to end a turn. So this is a lot like an um selfless spirit or protects your board. Which is cool. If you're going for like a aggro or Zov deck, you might want this card. Yeah, that's probably fine. Probably won't see too much play, honestly. I don't think so. All right. Blot out the sky. Interesting. So this is basically just saying the inkling, you're covering the sky in ink. <laughs> is that what that is? Then you destroy all other non-land permanents. So this is like an aggro board wipe. Although because if X is six or more, that's a really hard thing to hit for aggro. So eight mana for this, if you want to like destroy all non-land permanents and non creatures. But on the flip side, it's like, I mean, most of the time it's maybe a three mana two one with flying. That's probably fine. Four mana for two two ones. That's yeah, it's ahead of curve, I think. This is probably fine. You're probably gonna have the board wipe. This will be like okay value wise. That's decent. Probably just a standard, maybe historic card if that's a thing that comes up. Maybe that's still too slow. I think this is definitely a standard card, standard only card. But it's neat. I maybe if you get like infinite mana, destroy all non creatures, non impermanence, everyone gets a turn. But you still have like a huge board and you destroyed all of everything on their board. Definitely breaks parity, at least. Which is nice to have. We have Milla, Crafty Companion, and Luca, Wayward Bonder. Milla, one in a white, white. For a legendary creature fox. Nice. She's pretty. Whenever an opponent attacks one or more plane doctor you control, put a load to counter each other plane doctor each plane doctor control. So it negates one damage essentially. Whenever a permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or ability, you may draw a card. Ooh, it's a May. We haven't seen a May on a white card in a, in a while. For for at least drawing. <laughs> like even smothering tithe, like if they draw, it's not a May. You just have to. Which doesn't come up, it's not a bad thing necessarily, but like most situations, like I had problems where there's a other smothering tithe or something when I have like a Rissic study, um, or like when I have Mangara and they have like a smothering tithe, I have to draw. So like I have to have a mana and having this May, it definitely comes up sometimes if you play enough white, like <laughs> white cards, <laughs> because you really do hedge on those like white cards. And so like. It comes up very often because you're the one tooting for like those white card draw spells or for the playing like Mangara the command zone because he's in the command zone. You have often, oftentimes you're going to play, play with it until you just see it a lot more. Yeah, this is going to come up often. It's a cool card. I wish it was mono white, but you can always just play Mela's mono white commander if you want. That's probably fine. It comes out earlier too, the Mangar. It's cute. Luka, Lord Bonder, four and red, red for six mana planeswalker. It's kind of a lot. You may discard a card if you draw a card. If it's a creature card, you can draw two cards for a plus one, so it gets a plus six. Return to our creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield against haste. I love the next ends up. So it doesn't do a Felden, but you do get to resurrect something that has haste, so something pretty scary, hopefully. Maybe a dragon. Minus seven, you get an emblem whenever a creature you control enters the battlefield under your control. It deals damage equals about the power to any target. That's probably game winning. This card's probably fine for. It doesn't affect the board immediately. Probably won't see too much play outside of Super Friends decks. TBH. Last card we have is Mavinda, Student's Advocate. Two and a white for Legend Creature Bird Advisor. Flying. For zero mana, you may cast target instant or sorcery spell from your graveyard this turn. If that spell doesn't target a creature you control, it costs eight more to cast this way. If that would be put in the graveyard, into your graveyard, exile it instead. Activate only once each turn. Two and a three. <laughs> so one said this was only like a like a bad cast. I agree, but if you're playing white, of course it's your colors restricted to things it can do. But essentially, white can do anything, and so the cost of doing anything, apparently, from what I've been told, is I've said this before, but like it being co costed higher. But this is cool. It's a it's a strictly worse cast, but it's a cool effect. It's definitely a cool effect. I don't. Uh... I wonder why they made it activation cost, not just like a triggered ability or something, or a static ability. That's interesting. But hey, it's cool to see that zero again. I know they did it a long time ago, but yeah. Anyways, that's all I can say about this card. I don't know where this card would be played. Maybe low power, mid power EDH. That's about it. I would say Feather wants to play this. 
Well, I, I think if you're playing Feather, I think maybe you're already winning if you have Feather out and this, right? If you have only this out, what does it accomplish? You could like draw a card off your cantrips, maybe. Like draw an extra card a turn, maybe. Which might be worth it, having another like card engine. I think there's more things, I think there's better things to do with than this card. It can activate immediately, I suppose. But like the other cards you'd be playing in place of this would be like, um, like a, a Spothering Tithe, maybe. Or a creature that could draw cards. I don't know. I don't think this is worth it, but I do like the effect. Gosh, it only costed less. <laughs> I know it says like zero, you can cast it if it's targeting a creature control, but geez, eight? I want to play like a white spell singer deck so badly, and this is just like, no, you gotta pay so much money, so much mana. <laughs> Anyways, tell me guys think about this comes from below, all these cards you went through. I think I will have to, my vote is for being like the best card that we went through today. Probably Vanishing Verse. Maybe Fracture, Vanishing Verse, Silver Quill, Silencer. Vanish first, Silver Cove, Silencer. And. Uh, gosh, it has to be one of these white ones, of course. We gotta rep it. Alright, Mila. Crafting Companion. Those are the top ones, boys. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about this. Comment below.